Hey YouTubers, it's Eli the OBD Tech. I'm here working on a 2003 Acura TL Type S with a 3.2 liter engine. I have uh, my scans already hooked up. We have uh, four codes. We have a, P, a P0301 cylinder one misfire detected. A P0302, which is uh, misfire number two. We have a P0304. It's cylinder four misfire, and then we have the P0300 random multiple cylinder misfire detected. The vehicle does have the uh, the little triangle uh, warning light on, along with the uh, VSA, VSA, and uh, also with the uh, check engine light on. It's an obvious misfire, as I snap the throttle. You can hear an obvious misfire going on. Hopefully the camera could pick it up. So the next thing to this diagnosis, I'm gonna go out there and perform a, a cylinder drop test. To verify if the uh, if the computer's uh, telling the truth that miss uh, that cylinders one and two and four are misfiring, so I'll be unplugging the uh, connector to the coils to see if we see the uh, RPM drop. All right, guys. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, the cylinder drop test by disconnecting each of the coil connectors. And I'm gonna start by doing on bank two, which we got two, four, and six. Our scan data, uh, our scan tool said that we had misfires on number one, which is on bank one, which is on this side, and then cylinders two and four. I have my scan tool already uh, hooked up to on the RPM. So as I go through uh, each connector, I'm gonna show you guys. The, the RPM drop. All right, so I'm gonna start with number two, which is on bank two. I'm gonna go two and then number four and number six. And I'm gonna point the camera to the uh, to the scan tool data and let's watch our RPM drop. If our RPM drops, that means that that cylinder is uh, producing some spark. So here we go. Number two. So our RPM did drop to close to 600. Connectors back. I'm gonna do it one more time. And as our uh, grab data is indicating, there's that little hump there. That was when I connected back the uh, connector so so number one is seems to be firing maybe the core pack is good so maybe the problem is the injector uh, I'm not sure yet so I'm gonna do number four now so RPM did drop below 600 but um, as we saw there on our graph you see you know we saw that little RPM difference there Number four is also uh, firing. So I'm gonna do number six now. So our number six did drop RPM too. Our grab is showing that little uh, pump there. So, so far on bank two, we saw an, an RPM difference. Which uh, our RPM did drop below 700, close to 600. So that shows that those three cylinders are firing. But is it spark? Is it fuel? I'm not sure. But so far, number two, four, and six did show some RPM drop. So I'm gonna do on bank one now. These uh, number one, three, and five live back here. I'm not sure if uh, you can see the connector for number one. The number two is right here. I mean, number three is here. And then number five 
is in this area here. So I'm gonna start with number five. Hopefully, uh, I'm able to remove the connector. It's in a tight area, so here we go. And sorry for the glare, guys. So our RPM did drop, indicated by the little hump there on the graph. So I'm gonna do number three now. So here we go. Number three. You know, we, we saw that uh, RPM drop. Also indicated by the graph there, by the little hump. So I'm gonna do number one now. Which also was one of the cylinders that was misfiring, which indicated on our uh, scanner. So I'm gonna try to see if I could uh, get this uh, connector off. It seems to be in a, in a tight area here. Trying to see if I can disconnect it, guys. So here we go. I'm gonna use uh, this tool here. There's a little tool pick for connectors. I'm gonna show you the scan data. I can't really get to the connector guys with one hand, so I'm gonna put down the camera. And hopefully, you know, the, you know, the camera does pick up the RPM change. Alright guys, so this is what the uh, connector disconnected. There's no RPN drop. There's no little hump on the graph. I'm gonna show you guys that the connector is disconnected from the coil effect number one, which is right here. So it seems that number one is the one that's actually being affected by either a coil effect that's faulty or perhaps an injector or some type of mechanical problem like compression or valve problem. So the next step I'm gonna do is I plug the connector, there's no uh, hump on the graph. So, you know, so this is what's up. You know, so this is a cylinder that's actually not producing an, an RPM drop. So I'm gonna, I guess the next step is to use a test light and check for spark on that coil, on number one. All right, so I'm gonna set up and show you guys. All right, guys. So you know, so I have the test light already connected to the uh, coil. I have removed the coil number one from the spark plug hole. It's connected to the coil, the connector. I got my test light already connected. It's connected to, uh, to good known ground. So the next step is to uh, remove the test light from the coil back from the coil pack to about an inch. So this is about an inch right there, and there's actually no spark. So this confirms that this coil pack is not firing as indicated in the uh, scan tool data when we did the uh, cylinder drop test that there was no RPM drop. But the question is, is it a coil that's faulty or is it a potential problem on the harness? So the next step to this, uh, for this uh, diagnosis here, I'm gonna take number, actually coil, no, uh, coil pack number six I put number six to number one. If, if number six fires on the number one connector, that just uh, verifies that our circuit integrity from the connector to the computer, it's good. But if it doesn't, that means the problem is gonna lie within the uh, harness. Potential driver on the P, uh, PCM. 
or a potential uh, problem with our power feed or ground. So, like I said, so so next step is to swap number one with number six. All right, so I'm gonna set up an okay, instrument. So I got uh, the core, uh, the core pack number six uh, connected on cylinder number one. So I'm gonna do the same test. I'm gonna remove the test by about an inch. And, and as you can see here, number number one is actually number core pack number six is actually firing on number one cylinder. So that just confirms that our connector. Our circuit integrity is good from the computer all the way to the connector. So this is a good coil pack here. So next step, you know, I'm gonna do the same test but on number six now. I'll show you guys that number that coil pack number one is actually a dead uh, coil. Alright. Alright guys, so I got the uh, coil pack number one on number six connector. And I'm gonna uh, just confirm with you guys that the coil pack. It's actually the cause of this uh, misfire. So I'm actually removing the test at about an inch. And there's still no spark. So that just confirms one more time that our connector on cylinder number one. When we connect all the computer, our circuit integrity was good. The problem here, it is a coil pack. As you can see here, it's not firing. There's no spark from the end of the test light. So there's gonna be a, a coil pack on cylinder number one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep number coil pack number six on cylinder number one. This is actually much easier to replace it here on the front. So I'm gonna get a new coil pack and then just call this a fix. But before I do this, I'm gonna just verify on cylinders number two and four I'm gonna check the, uh, the the spark output with the test light to see if it if you have good uh, spark on calls number two and four since they were actually part of the uh, codes which was number one, two, and four. So I'm gonna set up and show you guys. All right, all right, guys. So I'm gonna verify that call number two is actually firing. I have the test I already set up since uh, number number one, two, and four were the ones that showed up on the, in our scan tool. As uh, this uh, as the misfires, so we already uh, verified number one is not firing. So I'm gonna check number two now. As I remove the test out of the way about an inch, you see that there's actually a spark. So that shows that number two is good. Next, I'm gonna show number four. All right, so this is core fact number four now. I'm gonna use the test light once again. This is about an inch. You see that the core pack number four is also firing. It's a, it's a nice strong spark. So since um, what I'm seeing here, since number one coil was actually not firing, it, it was a, it was actually causing a dead miss, a dead cylinder number one. It was actually affecting the rest of the cylinder. So so that was uh, throwing off the computer, and it was and it was triggering you know other cylinders to misfire. All right, guys. So, like I said, the fix gonna, the fix to this problem is to replace coil pack number one. All right, guys. So this is Eli the OBD Tech. Subscribe if you like. All right, guys. So you know, so I couldn't really you know finish this video without showing guys the final fix. I've already replaced the coil pack with an aftermarket one. Customer decided to go with the aftermarket. I've cleared the codes. I've been you know letting this vehicle idle for about 20 minutes. So far, no no code has come back. The chicken light is off. I'm gonna rev the engine for you guys real quick to show you guys how much better this vehicle is actually revving up and it's actually at this moment the idle is so much better so here we go so it's crazy how one cylinder was affecting the rest of the other cylinders in other words number two and four so the computer was misdiagnosing the cylinders Due to the fact that number one was a dead miss. All right, so I'm, you know, so the next thing you know, I'm going to show you guys is the lap scope. I'm going to show you guys the uh, the waveform from the coil pack of an orig original to the aftermarket. I replaced the coil pack with the with the Duralas part number C one two two one. It was about fifty plus bucks. 
So I'm currently uh, back forming the signal wire on the aftermarket one. This is our square wave. It's about 5 volt amplitude. I'm going to show you guys the uh, original. I'm going to show you guys the core pack number 4. And this is a square wave of the original coil pack, which is also about 5 volt square wave amplitude. The only difference I see is on the ground voltage. Our ground, our ground is a little bit higher than the aftermarket. I'm going to show you guys real quick again. In our, in our aftermarket coil pack, our ground voltage is, is, is actually not even showing up. So sometimes the characteristics of an aftermarket to original are going to be a little bit different. Alright guys, so the, like I said, the fix was to replace the coil pack. So hopefully you guys, you know, enjoy this video. It was a quick video by using a test light. And swapping coils. Alright guys, so this is Eli the Tech. Subscribe if you like.